So it looks like the astronomers are changing tune. They're sort of waking up from their slumber. Hi, Celeste. <laughs> Stellar metamorphosis. Venus's age with DH ratios factored as opposed to Earth and other bodies. I'd written about this back in 2019, May. Um, of course, I knew about this back in 2011 when I had stumbled upon this idea. Like an idiot. <laughs> Whatever. In the general theory, stars evolve into life-hosting stars. We know this because astronomers have found thousands of stars in all stages of evolution. The trick now is to properly date the objects according to their elemental ratios, their masses, their elemental abundances, their levels of differentiation, their heat flux, their densities. There are multiple variables that can be considered but haven't yet because astronomers don't realize stellar evolution is planet formation. Planets are evolving dead stars. They're the same objects. Astronomers are still off in La La Land, but I mean, I guess this one space.com article is sort of a, uh, maybe, maybe they're pulling the head out of the sand, but it's, it's going to take a little while for them to kind of recycle their outdated assumptions. <clears throat> This is a huge expansion to the observations done by James Hutton in 1788 when he observed the unconformity of Sicker Point. Frankly, the Earth is extremely old, but there are even older objects, objects vastly older than the Earth. I wish I could have shown this theory to Hutton. He would have been totally blown away. That's very, it's very important to understand this. Astronomers, they sort of look at the Earth as being like this is it. The Earth and then all the objects in the solar system are roughly the same age. But then they all look very different. It's like, come on guys, where's your common sense at? Clearly, they're not all the same age. They're vastly different ages. And when they look at Venus, they're finally coming to terms with the fact that yes, it most, more, more than likely had deep water oceans, or at least they're saying shallow water oceans, they're testing out the water, so to speak. They're like, hmm, what if we say there were shallow water oceans on Venus? Hmm, will we get published or will we get blacklisted? Who knows? So they say the oceans are around a thousand feet deep and then they go, oh, let's, let's test this out. But the, 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 the whole ast astro astronomy community is so conformist. It's like, like, oh, how dare you think differently? How dare you have a new idea? No, Venus was just like the Earth. Let's just get this out there. Venus was just like the Earth at one point. And Venus, I think, is between 450 billion to 700 billion years old. It's probably around 100 to 150, maybe 170 times older than the Earth. So the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. And Venus is an old maid. Not only is she an old maid, she's dead and she's fossilized. It's like comparing, I don't know, my grandpa who was alive with dinosaur fossils. There's no comparison. Dinosaur fossils were millions of years old. And my grandpa was, yeah, he was an old man, but he wasn't dead. And not only was he not dead, he wasn't fossilized. And when you look at Venus, that's a fossilized star. That thing is old as hell. But astronomers, I, I guess they don't really look at it like that. They think Earth and Venus are around the same age. So keep that in mind. Um, I'll read a little bit, a little bit out, a little bit of this out to you guys. It's on space.com. I will link this to the bottom. The hellish planet Venus may have had a perfectly habitable environment for two to three billion years after the planet formed, suggesting life would have had ample time to emerge there, according to a new study. Right off the bat. We see that they think Venus formed in zero time. It says here, have, have had a perfectly habitable environment for two to three billion years after the planet formed. The planet just doesn't form and then life appears on it. No, as the object is evolving from much hotter stages of evolution, it is forming the life on it by combining the elements into molecules, which 
grow in complexity as the star evolves. We all know this. We all have direct evidence of it. You're looking at it right now. Earth made us. It's very, very simple. As well, Venus made life too, but Venus is a false law star. Anyways, um, Venus on this graph, I would put it, you see these little dots? I would put it way over here. And if you go down, you see it's near the, um, what number is that? 300 billion to 1 trillion years. So we're talking extremely, extremely, extremely old. And Earth is way the heck up here. It's still in the green zone. It's still able to host life. It's not dead yet. It hasn't moved all the way over here. And it's not a hellish world yet like Venus is. Where all the forests are gone. Where all the oceans have evaporated. Where, you know, people, maybe, have left a long, 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 long time ago. And maybe even they drop by every now and then to say hi to check on their old star that they came from. Who knows? That's speculation on my part. But continuing. In 1978, NASA's pioneer Venus spacecraft found evidence that the planet may have once had shallow oceans on its surface. Since then, several missions have investigated the planet's surface and temperature. <clears throat> or surface and atmosphere. We revealing new details in how it transitioned from an Earth-like planet to the hot, hellish place it is today. Firstly, found evidence that the planet may have once had shallow oceans on its surface. Keep in mind, when you get pub papers published inside of academia these days, it's incredibly conformist. They don't want you stepping out of line with the beliefs. And back in 1978, the consensus was that oceans were formed because comets carrying water deposited the water onto the Earth. Which is basically a haphazard hypothesis. It doesn't make any sense. You would have, have had to have a hell of a lot of comets just depositing on the Earth. Okay, then why hadn't the comets deposited on Venus? Where's the water? Why not Mercury? Why not the Moon? Why not Ceres? Why not Mars? It doesn't make any sense. Clearly, there's water on the Earth because the Earth is a lot younger than those other objects. As well, the process of forming water oceans is a byproduct of the stellar evolution process itself. The star takes oxygen and hydrogen, two of the three most abundant elements, and it combines them together to make water deep in the interior. And as the hydrogen, hydrogen and helium thick atmosphere evaporates away and the star cools down significantly, those two elements combine together to make water, which continually cools the interior down more and more and more and more, making it to where it forms a solid surface. And then that's what we're walking on. We're walking on the core of an ancient star that went through all these stages of evolution and it still has water on the surface. Venus's water is all gone. Mercury's is all gone. Mostly. Mars is mostly all gone. We're looking at objects that are extremely old. Extremely, extremely old. Um, the process of forming water uh, is right up here. When a star is cooled down enough to where the chemical bonds can uh, combine, and then it forms its water, and then the water eventually evaporates again. So it's too hot at first for the chemicals, for the oxygen, hydrogen, to make stable bonds. Eventually it cools down enough forms a lot of it, and then that water breaks apart and evaporates back into outer space again. So it's a, uh, it's a uh, sort of window of opportunity, if you will, for having water on that object. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. 1978, that was six years before I was born. It's believed that Venus may have been a temperate planet hosting liquid water for two to three billion years before a massive resurfacing event about 700 million years ago triggered a runaway greenhouse effect which caused the planet's atmosphere to become incredibly dense and hot. Temperate planet hosting liquid water for two to three billion years. Of course. Venus had life on it. Venus had force. Venus had little creatures running around on the surface. 
Venus had fungus. Venus had coral, ocean, coral reefs and oceans. Venus had an oxygen atmosphere with nitrogen. It's very simple. We're looking at Earth's future, <clears throat> many hundreds of billions of years into the future. <clears throat> and it says here, how Venus died, why Earth survives. Again, when they're talking about why is Venus like this and why is Earth like this, they're not looking at the two objects as being different ages, vastly different ages. What they're doing is saying, both formed at exactly the same time around the sun four and a half billion years ago and now they're different why did that happen see that's a very weak weak argument what they should be doing is saying well clearly one doesn't have a magnetic field it's completely solidified on the surface it doesn't have any oceans it doesn't have you know force it has a very thick co2 atmosphere it, there's so many features about it that are completely different. And it's about the same size as the Earth, mass-wise, about the same size. The astronomers should have looked at that and said, well, hell, that thing looks a lot older than the Earth. But they don't do that. They assume both are the same age, so therefore they make a mystery exist when there was never a mystery to begin with. So they ask the question, why are they so different now? not realizing the reason why they're different is because they're vastly different ages. But they already have made the assumption that they're the same age. You see, that's, that's them forming mysteries and making it more difficult on themselves when really the answer is clear. I see a lot of scientists and astronomers and people shit, daily life making assumptions about the world around them that are untrue and then they say, well, why is it like that? Well, the reason why it's like that is because you're assuming something to be true that isn't true at all. That's why you have the mystery to begin with. And that's what you need to attack when you're doing scientific investigations is your assumptions. But I don't see astronomers attacking their assumptions because of the way they're trained and the way they're indoctrinated inside these institutions. They're all trained to think the same way, to all believe the Earth is independent of the young hot objects that they call stars so naturally it's a mystery to them how the stars form or how the earth formed when clearly you're looking at a, a clear dark clear dark night you see those little dots in the sky those are very young earths there's hundreds of billions of them but uh continuing continuing on um <clears throat> researchers from nasa's goddard institute for space studies shared a series of five simulations that show what Venus's environment would have been like based on different levels of water coverage. All five simulations suggest Venus may have been able to maintain surface temperatures or stable temperatures ranging, ranging from a low 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, to a high of 122 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Celsius for about 3 billion years, according to a statement from the Europlanet Society. You don't need a statement from the Europlanet Society. Venus was stable for billions of years, just like the Earth. It's it's obvious. That's that's a that's an old Earth, obviously. So whatever has been happening on the Earth happened to Venus at one point. It's very clear. Our hypothesis is that Venus may have been may have had a stable climate for billions of years. Michael Way, one of the study researchers, said in a statement. It is possible that the near-global resurface, resurfacing event is responsible for its transformation from an Earth-like climate to the hellish hothouse we see today. Again, they're saying there's a near-global resurfacing event. That's working off the assumption that they needed some extra event to make Venus look different from the Earth. With the assumption that it's the same age as the Earth and that formed at about the same time. If they get rid of that assumption, they don't need the near global resurfacing event. It becomes clear. Venus is old as hell. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and you can use a lot in, 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 the, in the doors of opportunity and the doors of interpretation and being able to understand things, they all open up instead of being, you know, closed minded and having your mind having your brain in a box. 
Under stable climate conditions, Venus would have been able to support liquid water and in turn possibly allow life to emerge. In fact, if the planet hadn't experienced a resurfacing event, it might have remained habitable today, the researchers said. That's also false. There's so many assumptions here. Let me let me break this apart. Venus would have been able to support liquid water and in turn possibly allow life to emerge. Life doesn't emerge out of liquid water. I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. There was incredibly complex and toxic environments early on in the, in the star's history when Earth was much, much younger, much, much hotter, and there was a whole hell of a lot more complex chemistry happening very early on in its life. We're talking very, very, very different than just, oh, life emerged from water. It doesn't work like that. Earth was very, very exotic and extremely different with much higher pressures, much higher temperatures, and just just a wildly alien environment long before humans were even here, long before life had emerged from its less uh, complex states. So that's a that's a another assumption I'm seeing there. They think that because something has water on it automatically, that means there's life. That isn't necessarily true. <clears throat> In fact, if the planet hadn't experienced the resurfacing event, again, no resurfacing event is needed. Venus is old as hell, but they're not going to look at that. They're going to ignore that type of interpretation because of the conformity inside of the institutions in believing that Venus is the same age as the Earth. It might have remained habitable today. No, it's not going to remain. It would have remained habitable today any way you slice it because Venus is extremely old. All the ability for it to host life is gone. Its magnetic field died. All the uh, oceans evaporated. All the life, the forests, everything, it just completely was incinerated by, by the buildup of uh, CO2 on the surface. And that happened because Venus aged. It got too old. There was no global resurfacing event even needed. When you have an Earth-like object aging 100 times older than it is now, with or without us here, life ain't going to be here anymore, man. And it says here, however, the resurfacing event triggered a series of incidences that caused the release or outgassing of carbon dioxide stored in the rocks of the planet. No, there was no outgassing of carbon dioxide stored in the rocks of the planet. What happens is, is when the oceans evaporate, the CO2 sink that the oceans work as, all the CO2 is being is dissolved in the oceans, it stays put. And it builds up as the water escapes, as the... Um, as oxygen and uh, hydrogen escape as well. Think about all the forests on the earth, all the trees, all the plant life. Think about how much carbon is in those. Just imagine all that carbon being in this gaseous form. Think about how thick the atmosphere would be if all the Amazon forest and all the Canadian uh, evergreen trees and all the Congo and all the life that has carbon in it was or became gaseous carbon dioxide that need to be released from rocks it's already here right now it's right on the surface right now but uh <clears throat> all right i think i made this talk long enough there's more here it's just when you read articles like this there's just so many assumptions that these astronomers are making true about the world and they're saying well you know this is how it actually works but they're never questioning their assumptions <laughs> it's very dangerous to take a worldview, make it true, and then try to explain things inside of that worldview when those previous assumptions were are wrong. It's like building your house, building a. It's like building a house of cards. All right, you guys. Uh, I made this video way too long. Take it easy, y'all.